Hey, this is Scott Duffy Bonsai. Today we're going to look at an action setup with a Canon EOS M50. Basically the entire camera, all the settings that would potentially work nicely for taking photos of moving subjects. You can see it's in TV mode. With TV, you're going to be adjusting the shutter speed. That's the key component to action photos in this setup. Of course, you can press this little button here and switch to exposure adjustments with that. Basically, you'll be adjusting shutter speed in this setup. Of course, it depends on the situation. Something else might work better for you, but with this setup, we're going to go on TV. Let's go into the menu. First page, JPEGs. I have it set to the largest JPEG. It'll be a little faster, better for the camera instead of doing raw photos, but of course you can do both and have a button set up for that that we'll get to. Image review, you want that disabled. You don't want that showing up in the viewfinder when you're trying to do action photos. Have these lens aberration corrections disabled as well. Probably a little faster on the camera to not mess with those. For the drive mode, I'm going to use low speed continuous for this setup, but of course you can use the high speed if you want, depending on the situation. Sometimes you might need more frames, but even the low speed is pretty quick. Tab 1, page 2, we're going to look at the ISO settings. With TV, we have auto ISO. In this case, 6400 should be more than enough in a lot of situations, and with the M50, Anything higher than that is probably going to be pretty rough on the photos. Auto Lighting Optimizer, I have this disabled to probably be quicker. If it's something you think might work for you and adjust those JPEGs a little better, feel free to try it out, but I have it disabled. In the metering setup, you might need to adjust the metering depending on the situation. You've got the spot metering or partial, but I just have it set to the standard. With white balance, auto white balance is decent on the M50, but of course you can adjust that if you need to. Especially if you're shooting JPEGs, you do want to get a good white balance for the photos. Picture style, I use Faithful a lot. It's decent, but there of course are a lot of other ones to use potentially. Especially with JPEGs, this is something you do need to consider. Through this, we've got long exposure, noise reduction, I turn all these off. Touch shutter disabled. You don't want anything on the screen messing with you. Touch and drag AF settings are important in this case. We'll be using the viewfinder and we absolutely want this set up. It uses the screen where you can touch it and move the focus area for the viewfinder and it works very nicely. That means we want it enabled. Positioning method absolute. In this case, it's very quick to use it instead of relative. Basically, absolute allows you to Move your finger a lot less to cover the entire screen with the focus area. Of course, you can use relative if it works better for you. Try them both out and see which one works for your situation. In my case, I use my left eye with the viewfinder and I prefer top left. So in this general area, with all of the AF settings, we've got server mode. That's important. You want it to continuously focus on your subject, on your focus area, and not stop. In this case, we will have a button set up to adjust between these quickly, but generally you can try tracking, but I prefer the zone AF. It's a large box of focus areas that it continuously tries to focus on and just is a little bit quicker, a little bit more consistent, and you don't have to mess with it as much. Of course, you can also try the single point AF, but in general, I like the zone focusing with this action setup. With this continuous AF, it basically means the camera will constantly try to focus. We don't want that, we just want it to try to focus when we're getting ready to take a photo. So half pressing the shutter or pressing another button if it's set up like that. Have this AF assist light disabled. In many situations with action, you're not going to be close enough to use that effectively. So it's just something, a hindrance. I have it turn it off. With the peaking settings, unless you're doing manual focus, disable it. IS settings are related to video in this case, so we have that disabled. Of course, if your lens has internal stabilization, might as well turn it on. For the movie settings, we're not going to be messing with this stuff for action photos. I have all of the wireless settings disabled in this case. We don't want to mess with that. Waste power, just not needed in this situation. You want the eco mode off. You want the power saving to whatever works best for you. In this case, you might want to disable this so that the viewfinder always stays on. In an action situation, we'll be using the viewfinder exclusively, but it will have a button set up to switch between the viewfinder and the screen. In this case, I'm going to go manual, and just for this video, it's set to screen, but you can easily set it to viewfinder, and that's what you'll want to do. Let's go into viewfinder format. Now, this is a preference thing, but I prefer the smaller view. It's a little easier with glasses. Now, you can use that larger one if you'd like, but I have that set up to number two. In this case, you definitely want the higher frames per second in the viewfinder, so I have that set up to smooth. Reverse display, that's not something you need to care about in this situation, you can disable that. Shooting info display, let's go in here. Screen info settings, 
with not much on it. Let's go inside there. You can see I only have this one checkbox set up. Otherwise, this adds a lot of extra stuff to the screen that we don't need to really care about in these situations. You can, of course, check these out and see if they would help you with your setup, but in my case, I want it as basic as possible. So you just got that one single screen, less things to change accidentally, especially in action situations, you want it quick, you want it consistent. Let's go into viewfinder, same setup. We have as minimal as possible. We don't need this extra information. Here, this is a preference thing. I have it set up the 3x3 diagonal with the lines, but of course you can turn these grid lines off. So you can see those lines do show up on the screen and it makes it easier to adjust to where your position is and get it straight on diagonals. So just something to consider if you do want that extra little bit of help. You can see on the screen it is very minimal. If you try to press the info button, nothing changes, but that's what we want. Let's go back into the menu. Let's check all these other ones out. Custom functions. So we're going to be adjusting the controls based on this action setup. The first one is standard. I'm not gonna mess with this. Now you can adjust it so it only does metering or auto exposure lock. Depending on how you want it set up, you can actually set this button to focus. But in this case with the M50, it's hard to press this one button and that at the same time with one hand. So I just leave it as is. Here for this button, I actually have this adjusted for autofocus off. In some situations, if you're half pressing the shutter, you've got a subject locked and you want the autofocus to just stop, you can hold this button down here as I have it set up and it'll do that. The MFN button on the top here I have set to switch between the viewfinder and the screen. That way it's not going to use this sensor because I set it to manual. With that button that allows us to use the screen when we need to, but basically we're focused on the viewfinder. So that button will help us switch when we have to. So we go in here, you can pick this one, switch between VF and screen. So you can see the sensor is not working. Press the button, it switches to the viewfinder. Press it again, goes back to the back screen. So this one, I set up the video recording button to RAW or JPEG. So in this case, you just look in here, you can see one touch, it cycles between those. So that button is up here on top. You can see that it is cycling between RAW or RAW plus JPEG or just JPEG. That allows us to use RAW when we really want to, but in most situations, JPEG would be good with these action photos. So here we leave this as is with the exposure compensation. That's the top button right here. Here we also leave AFMF as is. Sometimes you might want to use manual focus. Here with the flash icon, I use AF method. This allows us to cycle between AF methods. I have that set up in a lot of my videos. You can see it easily allows you to pick one of these three. You press the Q and it switches there. It's very convenient, it's quick, and it's a perfect button for this specific thing. As I said before, I use zone AF, but you can use one of the three as you prefer. The trash button, I do have this adjusted as well. It's not super necessary, but I have it set up to ISO speed just in case I want to adjust that setup and go from auto to something else. So it's pretty quick and easy to have a button on there. In action situations, having the buttons configured like that really helps out. The last thing I have adjusted here is the My Menu. I set up a few different options here that you might want to consider adding to one of these My Menus. That way, if you leave it on there, you press the Menu button, it'll stay and jump right to this screen. It gives you something quick access and that it can be convenient. So basically, Drive Mode, ISO Settings, Highlight Tone Priority, if we're using JPEGs, that could be useful. Metering Mode, White Balance, again, with JPEGs, adjusting White Balance can be useful and picture style that again with JPEGs something useful. So these can be adjusted as you would like as you prefer. You can have multiple screens but in this case these settings with TV mode and JPEGs I could see potentially using these and wanting quick access. Hope you found this setup useful. Scarfed off your bonsai. Thanks.